Uh, little John actually stole a charger of mine once. <laughs> and we're going to try to retrieve and that like tonight. Wait, are we, are we going to get it back tonight? Yeah. How, long, how long, long ago was this? Uh, I don't know. Like six years ago? That's a good $80. That's a, Yeah. It's a, wait, the computer charger. With inflation like, too? You know what I mean? Now we're talking 125 Yeah. Well, we'll um, I mean, Jason's good friends with them. We'll... I'm like, hey, John, oh, hey, John, you stole my charger. Hey, you stole my friend's charger. <laughs> All right. And I want it back. <laughs> Enough of this. Okay. I'll reload it. Je- Jeff London. DJ Jason Smith. Pick on the pain. When the sun goes down, the music turns up. A whole new world opens up behind the velvet rope. Join us as we take you behind the scenes of the nightlife world. Are you ready? DJ Jason Smith, Jeff London. I'm the promoter, Easy DJ Podcast, live from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Alongside Braun and Aaliyah. And Aaliyah tonight. Aaliyah's in the house. Yeah. She's chilling, man. What's up, guys? Aaliyah, can you give us a bark? Huh. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> no no bark. Good cue, right? Yeah, Aaliyah's she quiet, sounds like Rick Ross when she barks. <laughs> does yeah. Aaliyah bark at all? Yeah, she barks. <laughs> no, she does not bark. Episode 44. 44. 44. Who's a good 44? Oh, somebody uh, was it Danny Jane? Ainge? Was he forty four? That's the wrong guy. Was he forty four? Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I could be wrong on that actually, but I think I feel like Danny Ainge was forty four. I only know Danny Ainge when he used to play for the Phoenix Suns because I lived there for a year. You lived in Phoenix for a year? Yeah, it was real weird. I like Phoenix. <laughs> I was like in a gang and shit. <laughs> I really thought I was like popping. Like it was like well, that's what. Yo, you- I gotta be. I'm in the West Coast. I need to be in this gang. Yeah, stupid. Did you do meth? I did not, but I do have a lot of it? friends that that you know, fell victim to the Sh- such thing as meth in Phoenix. Shocker! Oh yeah, it's a shocker right there. Whew. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a it was an experience, especially you go outside of the city a little bit. Oof. Yeah, it's like Florida. Danny Ainge was forty four. Hey, nice job. Like that. Nice. I like that one. It was right off the dome too. It's pretty good. Ron is pretty good when it comes to that stuff. I figure he has a Danny Ainge shirt though, a jersey. I don't actually. Uh, you rock a Paul Pierce one. I have, I have, I have numerous Celtics old old school ones. I have, uh, I have Chauncey Billups. Ooh, Ooh that's a good one. Uh, yeah. I have Eric Montross. That's uh, just a zero, right? Is uh, zero? Yeah. Uh, Rick Fox. I'm trying to think of like my my weird rare ones. Ed, I have an Ed Pinkney. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. What number was Ed Pinkney? I, I don't even remember. Nine. He might have been nine. Rondo was nine. Rondo was nine, yeah. What's going on, fellas? Oh, man, it's been all right. Got a little white party tonight action that I'm getting prepared for. Yes. Me and all white is, as you see, I'm Are you going to do all white? Oh, 100%. Yes. I even got white like glasses. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're going to go all out. All he out. actually has white leather. White leather. Biker gloves he's wearing tonight. <laughs> I do not have those. That would be fire. Woo! Where could we find White those? biker. Fingerless, though. Fingerless. Oh, 100%. 100%. And, and fingerless. cut out on the knuckles, too. Yep. Duh. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. I actually did get a pair of sacks for that. <laughs> of white fingerless gloves? Yeah. <laughs> do they fit you? Yeah. They're dope. I'm wearing them tonight. That's awesome. Who makes them? My mom. She made them. <laughs> But shout out to my mother one time. I know she watched the podcast. My mom knew when I was a child, I was obsessed with Michael Jackson, who wasn't. My mom literally took a white glove and hand sewed, like, not like uh, crystals on it. Yeah, they were crystals. Yeah, she yeah. hand sewed crystals on a glove so I could have it. And like three years ago for my birthday or Christmas, she got it like framed in a, like a little box. No way. It was the dopest shit How often shit ever. did you wear it? I mean, I was probably like six years old. I don't know what I was doing. Did you wear it all the time, though? 
Yeah, I think so. You wore it every day. And my mother also had a, a Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch t-shirt frame that I that I got. That's a dope Signed by Marky Mark frame? and the Funky Bunch. That. What are you talking about? He actually brought me on stage with him when he came to my hometown. Wait, but, wait, what? <laughs> hold the hold the press. What? <laughs> so Marky Mark was doing sound check, and I knew I'm like sixth grade. We see the limo leave the the you know the the venue, which was called the Forum. And we fucking just chased this limo down, just like four of my friends. Marky Mark's in a CVS, and I was like, we don't want to bother him when he's in CVS. We'll wait outside. So he comes out, gives us autographs and stuff, and I was just like, you know what? You only got one shot. I was like, hey, how about you get us backstage passes tonight? And Mark, Mark Wahlberg looks at me and goes, sure, why not? See my bodyguard when you get to the venue. We found the bodyguard. He led us backstage. He brought us in the backstage area. The, the, so his security guard was like, where do you want these kids to go? Stay in this room? And he was like, no, they could go wherever they want. So we're like chilling and like Mark, he's like Mark Wahlberg's like dressing room while he's getting dressed ready for the show and shit. I'm like rapping to him and that shit. That is very random. And this then the last so song weird. was Good Vibrations. He's like, yo, I want to introduce you to my new friends from Binghamton. And he brought me and my four friends on stage to dance with him. Did you we dance? Yeah, yeah. You were probably young. You were young. Six years, that's sixth grade, yeah. 12 years Well, old, I did man. win a break dancing contest when I was in third, when I was like, uh, when I was six, yeah. Sixth grade. Were you wearing the Michael Jackson glove? Mm -hmm. No, I was actually wearing a red leather jacket, though. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> With studs on it. Did your mom make that, too? Yeah. Wait, my, did, mom did, my mom did. She did all best. your costuming back then? Well, there wasn't much, but yeah, she did. I can't. Nice. Who opened for Marky Mark? I think some dude that he was trying to put on. I I bet you guys, if we could Google it, I bet you somebody you guys know. It was probably just some dude from Dorchester. I mean, the one hundred percent. It was, it was somebody one of the funky bunch. It was probably yeah. one of the funky bunch. Yeah. Where, yeah. The, where do you think the funky bunch are doing right now? I mean, I saw them a couple of years ago at the uh, at the club. Did any of them work for Mark or no? Yes. Oh, did, that's right? amazing. Uh, not a lot of them though. Yeah. Some did you know work that at the Foot video shoot for Good Vibrations in Dorchester? They actually had to bring. Uh, a brand new, um, they took down the, the basketball hoop and put a short one up so we can dunk in it. No. In the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun fact. That's a spoiler alert. They literally cut it out and put it, like put up a brand new I one. Mean, I mean, I'm sure they paid for it. No, no, they had to like replace it after the shoot for like a normal sized one. What was it, like six feet tall? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, he's not tall. He's not tall. He was killing it at that time, though. Yeah, he was doing I mean, the Tom, the Calvin Klein, and he was, yeah. Shout out to Ashy Ace from the Funky Bunch. That was one, one time. Yeah. Look at that, Jeff. Yeah, Shouts. yeah. Still on the phone. Yeah. I mean, dude, that was a great era. You can say what you want, but I mean, Chris Cross came out at that time. That was a good time for Boston. We had BBD. We had Marky Mark. I had, actually heard a Chris Cross story about Jump the other day. Really, and it has to do with House of Pain. Is that the House of Pain was about to re they came out at the exact same time. Yeah, they almost didn't release it because of that. Because Wait, they almost didn't release Crisscross? No, or, Jump Around. Or, they almost didn't release Oh, they almost around. House because, of Pain. Yeah. Because. They didn't want to be associated with a little kid group with their clothes on backwards? Yeah, it came out at the exact same time. Oh, I would yeah, feel, yeah. I would kind of, they, they I kinda, thought they were going to be biting. They were like, oh, they already yeah, did. Yeah, I kind of yeah. feel the same way. Like, I would be like, oh, I don't really want to be associated. But it's such a different song. Oh, totally yeah, different, totally totally different, different. But everything. I wouldn't even want to be like, even somebody to have that association. Like, we got the idea from Criss Cross or not. But if you think about it, I never even put those two together until I saw him like talk about that, how they almost didn't put, right, you right. know what I mean? Like, I didn't even think. I never like, even saw that. But hearing that, I wouldn't, until now, I didn't put any two and two together either. You so know, I have to agree with you. They were like, well, Criss Cross didn't put theirs out almost because of Van Halen jump. Really? No, that's a that's really easy no. news. Oh, <laughs> that's, it. that's the best synth in rock and roll. Well, that best was, synth in rock and roll. I mean, if you go back at that time, the the, the different radio stations at the time. I but mean, those yeah. records weren't really playing on radio. Jump? Uh, jump? Are you out of your mind? Wait, wait, wait. What? Which jump though? Crisscross? Both of them. All three of them. No. So, I, but you have to understand. I came from a town that didn't have okay. radio stations. So we had, had an so urban had, station. So we had Kiss One Away. We had. I didn't have any of that. Which was a pop station. Yeah. Well, played well back then. It was more. Was ninety four five around around that time? Yeah, it was called WZOU. WZOU. Okay. Yeah. And then it, and then there was the rock station. So yeah, so you'd have um, like BCN, and you have the hard rock one, which was AAF. BCN probably played Jump Around, and they probably played Jump by Van Halen. 
Oh, they definitely did that. Yeah. But, but on the Rock Saturday Station's Night Master Mix. <laughs> <laughs> but Rock Station definitely played House of Pain. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a crossover record. That here's the thing. I think I had this somebody. I don't remember who I had this discussion with, but maybe it was you. I don't know, or I don't remember who it was. But we were talking about like House of Pain and like Cypress Hill. They almost crossed over into that rock genre. Like almost. instead of like pop, it was more did. rock than pop. That's why when uh, Rage Against Machine went out as what they go out as when they had uh with Wu Tang. No, they had Chuck D and then and, and uh, no, that was Anthrax. No, dog. Rage Against the Machine went on tour and they called it something else. And it wasn't with the Rock. It was with it was with Chuck D and uh, Be Real. Where the where the really? Yeah, it was called something against Rage. It was a whole tour. It was a big tour. What year is this? Probably like four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. Yeah. I don't know if it was Rage Against the Machine. I don't think it was Prophets of Rage. Prophets of Raves. Chuck D and Be Real. And that's the same thing. So you had, at that era, you had you had Chuck D who had a record with Anthrax. You were right. Bring the Noise. They did a remix with Anthrax, correct? Or they have a totally separate song too. Uh, I believe it's a totally separate song. But back in the day, Cypress Hill was on tour with like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They yeah, were, yeah, they were yeah, on tour yeah. With like Mad Rock. So groups. they were always on that. You know, they were more on the rock side of things than becoming a pop side of things. Like like I said, Cypress Hill and House of Pain could be crossed over as a rock artist more than it could be a pop artist. Now we go into the whole thing is is pop a genre. That's what we're That's a good about. segue. See, you gotta let shit happen organically around here. Is pop around as, here? Yeah, specifically around, around these parts. County crows around here. Um, yeah, I, I, I think Jason has a different. I mean, you you just think anything that's popular is popular music. Pretty. I much, mean, right? do you think that Jay Z made a song? What was a hard knock life? In in it started playing on pop radio that turned that record to pop. No, I don't think that. I don't think so because I don't consider that song a pop record. Me either. I'm just saying once it becomes on pop radio, it. Kind and of I think good. pop is a specific sound. I, I do. I believe that also. But I'm just saying for the mass. But general, some people don't. People some like people Madonna think that, is not an R and B artist. She is a straight up pop artist. Katy Perry is not a rock star, and or an R and B artist. She is a pop star. Yeah. Lady Gaga, hundred percent pop star. Like stuff like that. I believe that those artists are pop stars. But when you have a crossover hit like Crisscross goes into pop radio with Jump, do they? become a pop artist because if you were to buy but they didn't, they, pop they, of that year that song would be on that pop album they didn't change their sound no you're right you know what i mean like i, I feel like like if your trap song is popular like say you know sicko mode is a is a pretty much a rap song right yes or, or mo bamba or one of those songs are popular you wouldn't say that that's a pop song it's no 100 percent. i agree with that i can't play mo bamba for my grandmother i can't <laughs> have you tried no, she's dead. <laughs> she just wasn't hearing it. I thought he was going to say she's deaf. Too, too soon. <laughs> well, she's she Yeah, she deaf. is. She was deaf. D-E-F. Deaf. You guys are the worst. Fresh to death. <laughs> Making fun of his dead grandma, bro. Wait, your grandma's dead? Yeah. I'm, oh, shit. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> it's my grandmother. I'm not, I'm not 22 anymore. Speak for yourself. Oh, shit. My mic went dead. Do you guys have live grandmothers? Yeah, man, I'm 32. <laughs> no, I do not have a live grandmother. <laughs> Aw. No. Shouts to all the grandmothers. Shout out to the grandma. Shout out to grandmas that are listening. Yeah. So what was the next thing? What do you think? Do you? I mean, do you agree with that? Well, about you, pop music? Yeah. I, 100%. I think there is a certain style that is, is pop music, but I think that- a Style a, or sound? Sound. Okay. Then if a something in the rap sound becomes popular, that does not become pop music. It's I agree. Just a popular I song. agree 100%. You can't say, oh, that's a pop song now. I mean, I think you see it in the house world all the time, too. You know what I mean? Like Oof. house music with no, with no vocals is not really considered like popular music. And then, you know, but like a Black Eyed Peas house song is considered like Pop. You know, I think pop needs to be. Do you think Black Eyed Peas have a house sound? I mean, yeah. electronic sound for sure. I mean, I got a feeling. 
<laughs> I mean, technically, right? It's the tempo, it's the drum. It is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But see, like that's what you think. We can get real complex of what makes a pop song popular. Is it the hook? Is it the vocal? Is it the writing? Is it the sound? You know what I mean? Oh, I think it's a combination. Shake of that, that. I mean, no. What was it's gotta that song? It's got to be dancey, right? But it's oh, also got to be fuck. You got you got to be able to sing to it. It's got to be catchy. Yeah. What was the other song at that? I got a feeling, and there was all those ghetto records were like that. Sexy, damn, you a sexy. But but I think hip hop that is, was a pop record. But they do have pop elements now. I mean, it's, hip hop's been getting very sing songy, very hook oriented, very whiny. You know what I mean? Like, thank you uh, one time to uh, Fetty Wap for turning hip hop into crying whiny shit. <laughs> you don't like Fetty Wap? Fetty Wap got joints. I like three Fetty Wap records. <laughs> only got, dude, this guy only got one eye. Leave him alone, bro. I'm not. I'm not I, riding around in my car listening to, to Fetty Wap. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, Why? fraud or tax? What was it? No, kilos of fentanyl and cocaine. Oh, I thought he he just played guilty to it. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. A minimum of five years. A maximum of seventy. Wow. Well, I mean, come on! Like, what? What are we? What are we doing? What Dude, are we doing? I, he told me at one because I think he lost all his money. I saw an interview on somewhere where he had like he was getting like one hundred and fifty for a guest appearance on a record. Oh yeah, he was like he I had mean, no point, idea how much the, money he had, he had. Four songs on like the top ten oh, Billboard charts. He said he had eleven houses at one time. Didn't how even you, know it. How can you possibly? Like end up completely broke where you're selling fentanyl after uh, after that. I don't know. You she gets, keep up that lifestyle. Gets hard out here for a pimp. Brewster's millions. Brewster's millions. It's hard to spend a lot, all that money. If you have ten million dollars, it it's wasn't hard him. To go broke. I think his his account took a lot, and he was paying. He, he he mentioned something that he'd go to the store and he felt bad. He had ten dudes with him. He wanted a pair of jeans that cost five hundred dollars. That ended up being five thousand dollars of the same like, jeans, jeans for, for his. everybody. Yeah, yeah. you that's, get jeans. That's what, yeah, that's what he paying, that's what he said jeans. he was doing. <laughs> Hurley gets paid jeans. Everybody gets paid jeans. We gonna start hanging out with more famous rappers. Yeah, he felt bad going shopping and not being able to bless. His, his people so he would buy the same thing for everybody do you think he had bad like do you think I do that like, with cheeseburgers do you think he was like running into doors or anything like that I buy all my friends cheeseburgers <laughs> cause he couldn't see it out of his eyes yeah I mean uh, your, your depth of field is probably all t I mean he's probably used to it by now yeah dog I mean we've already made fun of people's eyesight people's hearing <laughs> yeah people being dead I think we should all wear an eye patch for next Wednesday and just try to go through the Fetty Wap experience <laughs> <laughs> seen through the eye but if he was born like that, he wouldn't know any different, though. That's true. I'd like to know that. I'd like to discuss that with him. Do we know anyone that has one eye mm. that we can bring on? I met a girl with a glass eye. had a fish in it. She got one eye. Ooh. <laughs> what was that from? Far side. Your mama. Your mama, mama got a glass eye with a fish in it. Yeah. Your mama's so fat. What was it? She got a... Uh, Your mom had a peg leg with a kickstand. Kick yeah. kick <laughs> yeah. Mom got a peg leg with a kickstand. Yo, shout the out the like far really, side though. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, man. I, actually, it's, it's odd. We we're talking about that. I just uh, listened to um, what's the one with uh, what's the second album? Wait, they had a second album. Yeah, they have three albums. I don't think I listened to anything other than the first one. I couldn't even tell you the second album. They had a song on it. That was popular. It wasn't running. Wasn't on that album. Was yeah, it? running was on that. Oh, it was. Yeah. Shout out to Dilla one time. Um, that record was always that sample was amazing. It was. Uh, did he do the both albums? He did stuff on both albums. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't do a lot, but he did. I think he, he did, did all the remixes on the first album. Yeah. He what? didn't do "Passing Me By." I think he did the remix. There was a remix to "Passing Me By." <laughs> Like back then, like there was like whole, re they, they remixed almost like every song on every album. Yeah, it was amazing because it was smart marketing because you not only would buy the single, but you would then go back and buy the maxi single because that's the only way, or the seven inch would have versions on a seven inch that, that aren't on a regular piece we of vinyl. Soul, Lab Cabin, Lab California. Cabin, California. Yeah. Great record. Yeah, Running was on that. Oh, shit. I never listened to it. Um, uh, that was the time that I was living in Phoenix, too. So it was That's real cool. Too busy, you know, <laughs> gang banging, selling meth and gang banging. I never sold meth, but 
gang. <laughs> He's like, I only sell meth to my friends. I got jumped in in like a a, a, a golf course, dude. You got jumped in yeah, in a by golf ten course, dudes. Yeah, you got jumped in by ten dudes on a golf course. Yeah, my memoir is gonna be sick, bro. That is like that is some pretentious shit right there, <laughs> dude. We He's thought, like, I'll let you guys jump me in, but we got to do it at the golf course. Eighteenth hole. Eighteenth hole. Meet me there at nine p.m. <laughs> Was We're all black. Gang? I can't say it, man. I don't want to say it. Are they still around? Yeah, Are they still active. It's, it's like a real. It's like it was a real thing. Yeah, I feel like these I just guys thought it was it, that you were in the gang and then you. Were. <laughs> they they let you leave. They don't let you leave. They, uh, you yeah, leave moved, like bro. I know, but still, I thought they would be like, oh man, we used to steal cars and get chased by <laughs> helicopters. It was wild, bro. <laughs> I've done some dumb stuff. Not because because you're young, dude. You feel like you're invincible, man. I didn't think anything was going to happen to me. I mean, I'm in the hood. Like, I didn't know where I was. I was just with this so dude I just met. The car. Stealing a car. No. I had no idea. Was, I was just young. You, nothing bad was going to happen. How old were no. you? 14. Oh, jeez. I think you should know the, the difference between right and wrong at 14. Jason. Well, Come no. On. So at 12 years old. No, you old, just feel like you're invincible. I'm saying you don't feel like anything is going to really bad happen to you at that you age. You know why? Because after he danced on stage with Marky Mark, he was it's invincible. Just, it was. Yeah. You were invincible after yeah, that. Invincible. I had, my I, had my, I had my cross colors on. There, and, is, a, there uh, is a Mark Wahlberg movie called Invincible. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> full circle. He did a full circle again. I want to get back to the remix thing. I think that's a great thing we we're talking about. So I thought the marketing was great because you'd always you would rebuy a single because it had remixes on it. Well, do you think they did that because of twelve inch pressings too? Because it had the instrumental, the acapella, the song, and then they had to have a. Well, the records were first, but then when the cassettes came, then you'd have the maxi single. Do you remember those? There was yeah, there was maxi CDs too. There was, there was yeah, that was the, the UK yeah. versions, yeah. and then they would sell. Actually, what they would do is too, they would sell like like all right, cool UK. You have an exclusive oh. two remixes that you're gonna put Smart. out. Or they'll do a remix that only released in Japan. They used to do stuff yeah, like yeah. that all the time. So you have to buy the imports, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's why sometimes you find different versions of songs that you didn't even know yeah. existed. existed. I have some dope Colored vinyl versions of like Madonna records that are just like unbelievably like so beautiful. Yeah, should play one tonight. I will. Uh, tonight, white party, little John. Yes, me and little John, and Grand, tearing uh, it down. Don't forget to come check it out. Even though it happened not, last this week, is not live right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you listen to it, it will be. Uh, if you missed it, damn, it's so a shame. Sorry for you, man. Because it's going to be some litty. Uh, little John actually stole a charger of mine once. And we're going to try to retrieve that like tonight. Wait, are we, are we going to get it back tonight? Yeah. How, long, how, how long ago was this? Uh, I don't know. Like six years ago? That's a good $80. That's a, Yeah. It's a, wait, the computer With inflation it. too? You know Ooh, I mean? Now we're talking 125 Yeah. Well, we'll um, I mean, Jason's good friends with them. We'll, I'm yeah, like, hey, John. Hey, guy. John, you stole my charger? <laughs> hey, you stole my friend's charger. All right. And I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this. <laughs> I know. I googled how much you're worth, bro. Yeah, give me back my charger, and I want to know. I want a new charger. What do you think, John will say? <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah. funny. It doesn't. I can't even think about the the. I it's the the premise of saying that to him is so funny. I couldn't even imagine what an artist would say back to that. I think just as long as I don't kiss him on the cheek. Oh. It shouldn't be a problem. Why? Did somebody kiss him on the cheek? No, no, no. You didn't hear about this? No. So T.I. and the dude from the Chainsmokers, which yeah. one? The singer, right? The singer one, yeah. Uh, he kissed T.I. on the cheek. Like he was just so happy and, and just like- Oh, T.I. The... don't play that shit. Oh, huh? he, so he what he do? Him. He punched him? <laughs> he punched him. him in the face. But the best thing about it is the guy's describing- So it wasn't on like- There was no recording of it, but oh, he's talking no. about it. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, man, I was just feeling a vibe, and I don't know. I just kissed him. But, you know, I was wrong. I shouldn't. Yeah, that. he's like, he hit me. He's like, I don't have no ill will feeling. Like, but the best is like, I kissed him. He's like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. That was some like New York shit. Like, though, that's like honestly like a great show of respect. That's, you know, I understand, but T, like, kiss, kiss somebody on the cheek? Like, you're like, that's some New York shit? <laughs> like, some gangster shit, man. That's some gangster shit? <laughs> like, the Don, you kiss the Don's fucking show, like, on the cheek, right? I don't think it was like that. I think it was like, get over here, man. <laughs> oh, did you ever see the episode when T.I. was on Eric Andre's show? Oh, Jesus. I thought he just fell. Oh, oh, my God. It was so funny. It was so awkward. Uh, shouts to T.I. But yeah. uh, T.I. said, I mean, he. 
T.I. was like, yeah, I mean, no ill will. <laughs> no nah, ill he's all right. Yeah. Don't kiss me on the cheek. Yeah. I wonder, I, yeah, I would love like to that, have so. seen, like, what kind of, you know, punch in the face. Because there's a lot of different. Did he really punch him That's in the, the face? That's the thing. It's like, I don't think, I mean, think about it. Or do you just say, don't do that? So, speaking of that stuff, and other rappers in the news, Diddy last week. Yeah, I don't know anything about this. So, please inform me. Just straight up. Oh, Usher tweeted. got a little upset about something he said, right? Yeah. Tweeted like yeah. R&B's fucking dead. Okay. Timbaland gets on FaceTime with him or whatever. They just have a discussion about it. And then everybody in the community, R&B community, and everybody that has a say started saying stuff. Did he retract what he says and just wanted to hype up, you know, and get the, that R&B feeling? He says that, that R&B... Right now, he doesn't get a good feeling like he did in the 90s, 2000, <laughs> and that it's no real voice that's giving him goosebumps. There's no, like, you know, real, you know, it's auto-tuned out, and it's, you know, it's changed, and the, and the, the lyrics well, aren't. Well, so is hip-hop, though. And the lyrics aren't what? hitting like they used to in R&B. Well, hip hop ruined R and B. Actually, it's kind of it's kind of ironic that the that, fact that Diddy is like probably <laughs> responsible for the ruining of R and B. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad take either. No, I mean, but a lot of people have spoken up, and I'm, I'm hoping they do. They'll come out with some R and B. That, but I, I think I don't think R and B is dead. I just don't think it's really mainstream right now. At it's all. not pop. <laughs> well, it's just not. It's 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 like it's just rappers that sing. Well, I'm talking about like. Her and like SZA and like and like, but even that is just like the all the beats are rap, like all, like the the vibe is very hip hop, like the oh yeah yeah, it's definitely hip hop. Like you mentioned the attitude is very hip hop. It's influence. definitely influenced by hip hop. Like dude, I'm talking Smokey Robinson. I'm not talking. I'm talking about like yeah. real R and B. Like where is where is that? Like well, that Daniel Caesar guy is making records like that. Right? There's one I heard the other day. I think his name is Ballard. It was pretty. It's pretty dope. It's yeah. out there and ex it's it, there's a there's a market and there's an existing I mean exist ex existence existence of it. You just have to, it's just not in the mainstream forefront of music. Right I think now. the last time R and B was good is when R and B stars hated hip hop. When give me an example. Yeah, like the Smokey Robinson. Like I'm talking about like the what? 80s. You know what I mean? Like we're like you know. I don't think hip hop was around. No, that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's when it was good. Like the the the, the influence of hip hop to R and B, I think, has done a lot of damage. Well, no, I think well, there was a time when it was like Maxwell and and people like that. Mary J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mary J. Just put out a no, new album. But Mary J. Is, has again has hip hop beats behind it and stuff. Well, she was the R and B hip hop queen. I think that in that right? era in the nineties was kind of like New Jack Swing was kind of like you yeah know, you had you don't like have a New Jack of a, Swing uh, anymore. You know what I mean? It was that was kind of like the beginning of the end there. Actually, you know what? I think New Jack Swing ruined ruined R and B. That's a good take. Teddy Riley, but I love those. You know, Tony, so like, Tony, but Tony. But it's not like I don't love those records. It's yeah. not like you know. But if you're thinking about like 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 real R and B, like just R and B, mm -hmm. because hip hop was always anti R and B for a long, long time. You know, rapping bullshit. Yeah, like we're not R and B. You know what I mean? It was almost like because I I think like they they got were upset that like only R and B groups got booked. So if you had a tour and had rappers on it, it always had to be like an R and B headliner. Mm -hmm. So it was like an animosity thing. Is that who opened up for Marky Mark? No, man, your friend from <laughs> Dorchester did. I told you, Ashy Ace, Ashy Ace, and they. How I remember he? they all wore masks, so nobody knew who they were, actually were. And Marky Mark was actually one of the backup dancers for him. I think you're talking about the St. Lunatics. Wait, this who wore masks? Me. The opening act oh. for Mar Mark Wilder. What kind of masks? I don't remember, man. Plastic ones. Dude, we got to. I got to hit Jabberwockies. It was the Jabberwockies. <laughs> Jabberwockies. Shouts to the Jabberwockies. We got to get, we got to find this. I'm sure that there's footage of of yeah. this opening oh, act yeah. somewhere. You remember the year? We, we gave The year. I don't remember. Was it Wu-Tang? <laughs> That'd have been sick. No, it was definitely somebody from Marky's from Mark's from camp. Camp for sure. Nice. Yeah, we'll look into this afterwards. Yeah, you should look I'll call into Donnie. That. I'll call Donnie. I'll call Donnie. Do you know do you do you you must know some of the new kids pretty like Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Who's like your number one? Well, Joey? McIntyre? No. Well Joey's they always family said I grew used to look clo cl closest to You grew up in JP, uh, right? I grew up in West Roxbury, so he was a JP guy. Yeah. I didn't know him. His family he has like thirteen brothers and sisters. You worked with them at the YMCA and all that stuff. Um 
Jordan I used to hang out with after New Kids when he would just like hang out at the bars in Brighton. Nice. We used to party with him and go over to his house. Um, Jordan was the man. Donnie I knew from the clubbing. Yeah. I, I almost got into a fist fight at, at uh, Aria with Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> Yeah. Really? Well, I kind of like snuck into the VIP area. Remember when, when everyone was drinking Incredible Hulks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was like Aleko's night. Why? I don't that would know make why. sense. It would be a Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Shout out Aleko. And Donnie was like, you're not supposed to be in here. And I was, He said that to you? To me. And I was like, man, I, you don't know who I am. Like, why am I supposed to be in here? Yeah, that's very true. You don't know who I am. And I was like, we could take this outside. Nah. The Incredible Hulk was talking, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, that's probably the grossest drink in existence. It's disgusting. It literally thinking about it right Ugh. now makes me want to throw up. My mouth is watering to stink. What it was that. A hypnotic Hennessy, right? Yeah, Oof. it's then, just sweet and horrifying. We used to drink Alize because we thought that was so oh, cool. Oh, what else God. did we used to drink? Uh, Cisco. We thought we used to drink Cisco and think that it was there was liquid cocaine in Cisco there. Cisco will make you lose your job <laughs> in your life. Mad Dog 50, 40, 2020. 20, yeah, 2020. <laughs> There's a, there was also one that, that came out. Remember that Oof. that pink uh, bottle? It was like a mix of like champagne. Aftershock? Yeah. No, no, Wait. No, 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 I remember that one. It was and, T-Pain's. And every rapper was on it. It was T-Pain's. It was yeah. T-Pain's liquor. Was it, was the, half, was it? it was half was champagne, half something else. Yeah, it was like half champagne. Oh, and it was like, bubbly? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was terrible. Oh. It was T-Pain's. Yeah. I, that's it. We're doing it. We're doing a tasting. We have to get them all. Well, what was it? There was a, what was the purple one too? The the dip set one. They had that. Oh, one. I don't remember. It was called no. something purple. <laughs> I mean, there was. I mean, John, and then John went. John has his own. Speaking of which, maybe we can get some crunk juice from John Yo, tonight. Dude, if Did I don't have, have crunk, crunk juice tonight, I'm gonna be really upset. Yo, know what I asked John last time I was playing with him? I was like, dude, can you just please play damn? Please, <laughs> play damn. What do you he's, say? He's, he's, he's like. I only have 10 minutes left. I go, fucking play damn, dude. Let's get crazy. Oh, oh the, that record was so good. The, the, the so fire. was called Nuvo. Nuvo, yeah, that's oh, right. God. Yeah. Holy shit. That was T-Pain's. That's right. You, There was no bar that, that, that carried that. that no, we did. We carried it at. No way. Yes. And there's. <laughs> they used to give that shit out in still, New York for free. I swear to you, they about five years ago, they still had a case of it downstairs. <laughs> of course they did. Where? Let's go scavenger. We gotta get it. We gotta find it. Make a phone call, bro. Look at that label. The flat bottle, like the 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 cap on that. Bottle is pretty fire. The cap is just like a flat. (laughs) It was T Pain's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody. I don't know. Do you think he was the first person to have a the first artist to have a liquor like that? No, I I feel like that. I feel like that was pretty young before that. No, really. I don't know. I don't think so. I think Nouveau was the first artist liquor. Even Armadale? Well, I mean, I guess Armadale wasn't technically What's manufactured Armandale? by a... Uh, Ace of Spades. Armand- well, to be to be created and manufactured by the artist. Like, all those other ones were, were existed before. Ace of Spades, Armadale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. This came out in 2013. Diddy had Sorox in 2007. I've been marketing. So, hey, so I came out in 2003. Diddy All right, so Diddy was the first. So Diddy was the first. Hey, Diddy did it first, man. <laughs> After he killed R and B, he did he it. Ruined R and B. He goes, "I'm gonna kill the he liquor." Ruined the liquor industry. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there, there was a. Uh, there has to be one before that, though. I, I'll think. That's a like, good. That's the, a good. But, but I mean, not like research. sponsored by uh, by a rapper, but like it manufactured. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think Ciroc was the first man. It might be Ciroc. If it wasn't Nuvo. Yeah, Nuvo was after that. Yeah. That was when everybody started. I mean, Drake has his ludicrous had some drink. I mean, yeah. everybody had like a cognac and uh, I mean Diddy still has like Deleon and all that stuff. There's so, a, there's footage of him coming off the plane with the big Diddy's Diddy's looking big bodied right now. <laughs> you saw oh, that? Yeah, you had a shirt yeah. off. I'm like, why are you walking around everywhere with your shirt off? Buddy? I like it. Yeah. Big body Diddy. He's a big body Diddy, man. Good for him. He's not dancing in the movie. He's just, a, he's just square. <laughs> yeah, square. He's the man, though. I love Diddy. Just the Diddy. Dude, you can ruin R&B again. <laughs> Bring it back and ruin it. Yeah. What is he doing movies now? I mean, he's doing everything. I mean, does everything and nothing at the same time. Even the man. Sorry. 
Yeah, Leo. I'm just gonna Word out. Death from Leo. Well, once again, <laughs> another great discussion about things. Hey, welcome to the show. Bron, as always. Bron, it's a pleasure, sir. Always. always. Have, so Bron's not only on the show, he's in the office as well, and I love it. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm in these streets. <laughs> he's in these streets. He is. So once again, we want to thank Hurley, as always. Aaliyah, special guest, Bron, coming through, Hurley. Jason. Where can they find you, Jason? Jason Smith Music. Bron? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at <laughs> Bronski underscore beat. I like that. You Please can find me at, shout me out. At Jeff London underscore. You can find us at on the promoter. He's the DJ Hurley. You got a new remix coming out? A new uh, edit? Oh, always, always. Watch out where for Hurley. Where can they find that Hurley? Uh, my SoundCloud Hurley H R L Y H R L Y. Word up. Check it out. Peace. Peace. Okay, I'm reloaded. Jeff London, DJ Jason Smith.